everybody. Uh, Jamie here with the Albuquerque 737 Experience. I'm uh, not going to do a big intro on this one. This video is going to show you how to uh, wire the switches and install them, and then also how to wire the AN1 boards, which drive your enunciators. So uh, without further ado, here we go. All right, the first type of switch we're going to have is going to be the multi-position rotary switch. So this is going to be used to control your uh, DU selections and things like that. There's a total of seven, I believe, in the kit. Um, don't quote me on that. But uh, this is a common one on the MIP. You'll be doing this one a lot. On the back, you have multiple poles here. The one in the center is going to be your common or your ground. Um, they, they use the term common more often than ground, so get used to saying that. Um, on the poles on the outside, there's a bunch of numbers. You want to start with your first selection being a number one, and then number two, and then it skips one. So then the fourth position is actually going to be your third uh, position on the switch. Fifth is going to be your fourth, and it skips one again. So then your seventh will be your fifth, and so on and so forth. Now these are adjustable. You can uh, determine the number of positions you want available. All you have to do is take off the nut and the washer, and then there's a ring in here. It has a little tooth on it. Let's see if you can see that or not. But uh, it has a little tooth on it. Inside the front here, there's uh, different holes and where you choose to put that tooth is going to determine the number of selectable positions here. So if it goes into the first one here, you're just going to have two. If you go into this, the second one, then you'll have three, and then four, and five, and so forth. So we want this one to have four. We're going to count three over. So you have two positions, three positions, four positions. So I'm going to put the tooth into the third hole here, which allows for that. Just replace the washer and then the nut. Be careful when you're installing these in the actual MIP because uh, I've, I had that fall out and I had to reset it a couple of times. Um, anyway, it's selectable between two and seven positions. Once you have it locked down, you'll then have one, two, three, and four positions. And then you can adjust that however you need to, to do it. The second type of switch we're going to talk about is the toggle switch. You're going to find this in a couple of different varieties in the MIP. You're going to have your two position, and then there's one... That it, uh, there's two that have three positions. One has a momentary for your uh, fuel reset. So how you wire them all is exactly the same. The one in the middle is excuse me, going to be your common wire or your ground wire. And then you're going to have one on each side for each of your selections. It's going to be opposite of the way the switch is selected. So if you're down here, it selects this one. So if you click up, this is the one that's going to get the signal here, so when you're wiring, keep that in mind. The third type of switch that you're going to see on the MIP is the push button. Uh, you'll find these uh, here. You'll also have them over here with these guys right here. So these wire up very simple. They've got a common ground, and then they've also got a, a single wire. So there's not really much to those. They're all color-coded. Uh, should be a snap for you. So to install these, you're going to take this faceplate off. You're going to install the switch from the backside, then the washer and the nut. You're going to tighten it down so that it's freestanding. You're going to put this faceplate back on using the screws here. And then these right here are um, held on by just an Allen screw on the back. So you just take your, uh, there we go, your standard Allen wrench here. And then that just goes into the back like so, and then you twist. Toggle switches work the same way. You're going to put them through the plate. You're going to use the nut to set the depth. There's a, a nut on the back side as well. So if you don't want it sticking out a bunch, just set this one and then tighten the back one. And then it has its different positions. All right, for the hat switches here, um, it goes just like the normal toggle. You'll have the toggle with the round washer and back. You'll push through. You'll put the hat switch on. It's grooved so it can only go on one way. And then you're gonna put this nut over the top. Tighten it all down and you've got your working hat switch. All right guys, I'm gonna show you how to assemble the AN1 boards for the LED lights. Um, first thing you're gonna need is the AN1 board. Looks like this. They come in cards like so, so you can just break them apart and then break them off as you need them. 
Uh, the LEDs will come in little baggies. There's two of them. It's important to note that there is one longer and one shorter pole on these. One is for negative, one is for positive. Um, the other thing you're definitely going to want to make sure you have is the manual that comes with this. It walks you step by step on how to um, how to do this. I'll explain a couple of things that the manual wasn't terribly clear about. But anyway, looks like this. You can get that from them once you uh, purchase the stuff. So let's go ahead and start with these. So you're going to have your first LED. You're going to want it on the side of the board that says Copyright 2013 and Flight Deck Solutions LTD. The opposite side is going to have lots of other words on it. You don't want to use that side yet. So the um, shorter pull here, as I said earlier, is the negative and that's called the uh, cathode and that goes into the square hole so there's two holes here in the circle there's a square and a round the shorter or the cathode goes into the square so i'm just going to push those in like that and then i'm going to bend these to keep the light in place okay so that's first one do the second do the same with the second uh, make sure that you have the colors you want in here for the MIP. Um, it looks like there's just two of the same on everything. I know there's some cases in some cockpits where you're going to blend different colors in there. There's also some options for a dim and a bright setting. Uh, I'll go over that when we do the overhead because we don't really have any of that going on in this one. So same thing. Short one into the square hole. Cannot emphasize that enough. Okay. And they're in place like so. Next, I'm going to get a little connector out. Now, this goes on the other side. Now there's words down here. I don't know if you can see them or not. Let's see, that's gonna shadow off. But it says normal on one, and it says dim on the other. I screwed up one, putting it on the dim side, and I ruined it. So you have to use the normal side. So take the shorter end of the connector, and then it goes in just like so. Just go ahead and bend those out of the way. Okay, at this point I test them because I've had a couple of boards that had some bum pieces. So what I do is I will just take it over to the sim over here and I'll plug it into an existing wire that I have. And then I'll activate my software here to test the LED lights. And we have one red and one nothing on. So I jiggle it. I've got two reds now. It's a good connection. Everything's good. So now I can solder it together. All right, so now it's time to solder these together now that we've tested them. Go ahead and take the connector off. Just set it aside for now. On here you'll notice I have two holes. I just used a screwdriver to create those. Those work perfectly for sticking the LEDs in so that it'll hold still while I solder. That's in there nice and tight. So uh, I'd like to do a little disclaimer that I am no expert at soldering. I did my first solder a couple of weeks ago when I started uh, doing the switches on the MIP. So, um, there are probably much better and safer ways to do this. This is just the way I do it. So definitely seek out the best way. Uh, I'm just going to show you the way I've been doing it. So soldering iron in this hand, solder in this hand. I heat the pole first. And then I just give a quick little push like that. Do your very best not to touch the actual board. Focus that close. So there's that. All right, so here we go with the next one. Okay, nice, quick, and easy. Get off the board as quickly as possible. If you can, don't even touch the board. If your solder gets stuck, just give it a quick touch with the iron and it'll let go. Do your best not to uh, cross any terminals. All right, so those are all done. So the next thing I'm going to do is take it flip it over, reinsert the connector piece, let's see if I can find you here, there we go. The short end is going to go in the normal side, so see how it says normal there? So do not put it in the dim side, put it in the normal side. Again this is all outlined in the guidebook. 
I made a little hole with a knife to fit it there, so then that holds that. And then I do the same thing with the four poles on here. So. All right, the next part of this is super easy. All you need is the housing, these little gray doohickeys here, a diffuser, which is just a white piece of plastic here, and that just goes inside like so. And that's just uh, to diffuse the light from the LED so that they're not too bright. Next you'll need the actual label, which looks like this. Notice it's a little bit pink. That's because it has double-sided tape. You have to remove the film on the back, which then makes it super sticky. And then from there, you just apply the, uh, you know, like so. And voila, they're done.